G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Uh, tonight I'm going to be concepting up a character for my short film. Her name is Sophie. She is our main character's best friend um, who plays a pretty pivotal role in this little short film that I'm making. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to show my process and how I think about concepting up characters and um, it will also give me a reason to finally get her modeled up as well. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, so sit back, relax, and just, I guess, take it all in. I'm going to be talking about my process as I work through it. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, first thing I'm doing is listing out the character attributes, uh, her personality, what she likes to do, who she is, uh, her strengths and weaknesses. Uh, it helps you get you into the right frame of mind when drawing a character like this. Quick description of Sophie, she is headstrong, short, Asian, manipulative, gives no fucks, likes to get her hands dirty, fun loving, bit of a shit stirrer, and yeah. I'm also giving her a setting because she is going to be in two very different environments in this little short film. So I'm just going to focus on the first one. So it's a, basically an apartment. It's space, space, space. Basically that she's going to be in the most comfortable state. So no fancy clothes, no heavy armor, short skirts, I don't know. That sort of bullshit you see on uh, art station. It's true, it's <laughs> fucking shit. And let me clarify, it's not shit because of the artwork itself. It's, it's shit because it's basically just a bunch of dudes drawing big old titties. You know what, I'm just going to come out and say this. Art Station is basically just deviant art with artists creating fetish art with actual skill. There I said it. It's true. It's so true. Anyway, so what the plan is with this one is basically I want her to be comfortable. So she's not going to be exuding any real sexuality. She's going to be uh, in the sort of clothing you would wear in, say, the middle of summer, it's, you know, too damn hot. Uh, and she's with her best friend, they're just chilling. You know that sort of thing, where you're just sitting back, having a drink or two, talking shit. And mind you, these guys are roommates, so they live together all the time. So there's no, I guess, reservations about being comfortable. And as you can see here, as I'm sketching, I'm kind of just trying to get some of her personality into the pose. And the challenge for me is, to be honest, is that I haven't actually sketched anything in a long time. I also made the mistake that I didn't actually warm up before I did this sketch. So, in my opinion, this first sketch looks like trash. Um, but it's still useful. Um, it gets me to figure out the basics of her clothing, the kind of hair I wanted to have, and um, just those sort of things that helps me refine later on. As you can see, I tried to already draw the face in, but in my opinion, she ended up looking a bit crazy-eyed and um, decided to scrap it. Here, she looking a bit more friendly, uh, a bit more in line with what I was looking for, but ultimately, I ended up just still redoing it from scratch. So you might be wondering why I chose to do something a bit more natural over say a T pose or an A pose or something more technical like that. I intend on really sculpting this in, as in like sculpting it in a T pose, but um, you don't really get much of the personality out of a character when you just a static T pose. You want to get that personality in, especially in the concept stage. Here you can see I'm actually restarting from scratch. I'm just warming up and sketching up some poses that I think would be nice for the character. Um, as you can see, um, they're really, really loose. And then I come to this pose, it's pretty standard, but it helps, it helps establish the silhouette as I put the clothing on top of this. And um, I just run with it from here on in. I also decided to go with a standing pose because it helps me establish her frame, like the frame of her body. 
because um, you're gonna have different you know obviously everyone has different shapes and I wanted to be fairly um, small framed and as you can see because I took that time to sort of block out or just warm up a little bit with this second run um, you can see I'm establishing her look a lot quicker than previously now for this character um, my approach to designing her clothing is pretty much a combination of her being in the situation she is and my skill set as a 3D artist like um, and also the time I have to work on something like this um, the big thing that I'm trying to avoid is big flowy clothing because not only do you have to rig that sort of stuff you have to simulate that sort of stuff and simulating like say baggy pajamas uh, long flowing you know shirts and all sort of stuff it's just gonna be a pain in the ass and you can see here I'm just struggling with feet here uh, yeah, it's something I haven't done in a while ignore that but yeah getting back to the clothing um, I have a pretty practical philosophy when it comes to designing characters clothing um, a lot of people like to like add a lot of story and backstory and subtleties to the clothing like you know uh, this 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 necklace is a really important heirloom uh, from a dead mother that died in mysterious circumstances and she's never been able to figure out what's going on and all sort of shit but come on this person is basically smoking in an apartment she's not going to be wearing this medallion or necklaces or jewelry or anything like that or you know the sort of stuff that you can get bogged down in when it comes to world building um, this is going to be a tune shaded non-realistic sort of look so it's also important not to get bogged down in the details in that regard because I am going to be tune shading this shit so having like fancy metals and velvets and all sort of stuff is not going to translate well in a tune shaded setting and I want to um, emphasize this as well because a lot of students are being taught to really hammer home the detail on their concepts their animations and all sort of stuff when the actual resources that they have is fucking minuscule so think practically when it comes to your own films and your own animation because you have to make this yourself in the end um, in my case I'm just trying to give her some personality in the clothing in a way that is resource light in terms of 3d and easy to rig and also easy to animate mind you anyway during that rant you may have noticed that I have actually imported my original sketch um, I thought it was still useful because after doing that new sketch um, I felt that I established the character enough that I could repurpose the original sketch to fit her uh, new design and I think it worked out in the end Alright, now that I've done the full body, I've decided to actually create the front view of her face for use in 3D. So, this orthographic view was basically going to be used inside of Blender when I sculpt her face. Um, I just thought it'd be a nice way to top out this video, and also it's useful for me. It'll save me from having to do it in the future. Um, as you can see, I'll be tweaking other things as well as I go on, like her hair shape, all that sort of stuff. But I'm really happy with the way her face shape looks. It's got a nice sort of angularity, but also a bit soft. Also, uh, Krita's symmetry is fucking awesome. As you can see, I'm creating some guides to kind of line up the front and sides, because I do intend on using the side view as well in 3D. So creating a sort of a more aligned version of her side view with the front will become really handy in the future. And touching on Krita for a minute, um, so far I'm really enjoying this software. It's fuckloads better than GIMP. GIMP is slow and fucking bloated and feels like shit to use, but Krita is really flexible and it's actually designed to be used with tablets. I like the fact that it actually has an undo button on the screen. I don't think any other software has that. Um, yeah, so yeah, really awesome. The other thing I like about Krita is the brush previews. Um, they're really responsive and they're actually accurate to the description which I really like unlike uh, Photoshop which kind of gives you that uh, just a the brush shape preview uh, this actually feels a lot more natural to use all right we're getting some color in there um, I know that Krita has a fancy fill tool 
but because my lines are so sketchy, it didn't work. So brute force it is. But yeah, just blocking out the base colors, um, trying to be conscious that the fact that this will be a toon shaded character. So I'm not gonna go crazy with the shading. One of the big mistakes I made while shading this was that I wasn't being aware of the values of the colors. Uh, you'll notice at the end of this, um, the end of this video, you'll see that the colors of certain things like her shirt and her, and her shorts are a little bit different. Um, that's because I found that when I converted it to black and white, everything looked the same. So it's worth being aware of that as well when you're doing your shading. I wish I was. And it's especially important when you are intending on making an animation that will be toon shaded. Um, because you're going to be using a limited palette, relatively speaking, you want to make sure that all the shapes and discerning features of that character are well defined, not just in the way you've modeled it, but the colors themselves. That being said, the great thing about digital animation, you can change the colors at a whim. So if something's not working in a scene that you're animating in, you can always change the colors as needed. Um, I fully expect, for instance, for the color palette of this character to be, to be completely different when it comes to when it comes to coloring her in 3D. And on a pre-production note, that's where color keys come into play. So if I had enough time, I could line up this character with duplicate versions of herself and then just change the color of anything on her design. So basically her you know, clothing, her skin, hair color, you name it. I can change it and then if I like something out of a lineup, I'll go with that. Now you may notice I'm not piling on the makeup here for an obvious reason. Basically, it's because she's not going out in this situation at least. If she was going to a nightclub as, in, as I listed on my description, then she would have a different design about her. But in this case, she doesn't need the makeup so any excess contouring would come off as feeling a bit pornographic. Anyway, I think that's everything I need to say. Tell me what you think about the character. Is it appealing? Do you enjoy the look of her? Because I'm the one that's going to be animating her. And finally, let me know if you enjoy this pre-production shit. I've got another few characters I need to go through before I jump into the 3D side of things. So if you have any suggestions or want to see anything in particular about sketching, concept art, please let me know in the comments. So until then, catches.